Okay, so this is interesting. We figured out before that we had the ability to take a double bond and add uh, and make it an, epo an epoxide, which is something we can do a lot with. We'll, we'll be exploring what we can do with it later. But for now, we figured out we can make an epoxide. That's really cool. The challenge with this, of course, is that we either make the epoxide above the plane or below the plane. And these are not the same thing, right? So this gives us a racemic mixture. We can do it two different ways with MCPBA or with bromine and water and follow with hydroxide. So either way, um, it's cool, it's great, and it's powerful, but it's gonna give us a racemic mixture. And if you were uh, trying to make something for, um, for profit, then you would not want a racemic mixture, right? You would want to be able to make the thing you were trying to make and not, and not get the stuff that you weren't trying to make. So having said that, uh, let's, let's um, enter a, an epoxidation method, which is, where's my marker here? Which is selective, very cool, selective. And let me say one more thing about this before we move on. Let me say that, I, that on the one hand, I would say that most of the students watching this are not going to become synthetic organic chemists. And I understand that. I'm not a synthetic organic chemist. never have been, right? That's not the point, I think, of this. That's not why medical schools or pharmacy schools or dental schools uh, want you to learn this. I think the value that, that those of you uh, who are not going to be synthetic chemists, the value that you get from this is that you learn to, uh, you learn some deftness, you learn some sophisticated tools and how to, um, and how to, to apply them uh, to your benefit, right? So if we could do this in your undergraduate education, I know I'm, I'm rambling a little bit here, some of you are gonna see any value in this, but if you, uh, if you in your undergraduate education could learn to use tools, and learn how to find tools and learn how to use them and then create your own uh, solutions for, for problems that were presented to you, you'd become extremely valuable to, to the market. And that would be without respect uh, to exactly what market you entered, whether you were in healthcare or you were in engineering or you were in business, right? So the ability to solve problems is a big deal. And I would say, that's what I think of when I get to this section. I can say, uh, you know what, we're gonna do something really sophisticated. So, let's move on. We know that if we use MCPBA or bromine and water, we're gonna get a racemic mixture, which is, which is uh, better than not having an epoxide, but we can do even better than that. We can do something that is enantioselective, okay? All right, so here's how we're gonna do it. Suppose that you, uh, suppose that you consider any double bond that you want, lay it down in the plane. As you've got it here, suppose that you've got some kind of table here, and you've got no sort of table here, okay? Can you see that we've taken this epoxide and we've laid it down on top of this table? Can you see that? Uh, that's laid down flat, and the problem is, of course, that if you make an epoxide the, uh, with, with MCPBA, it doesn't know what face that you're going on to. It doesn't know the MCPBA to that, to MCPBA, that face looks the same as that face, right? Okay, so what a guy named Sharpless did, I think Ken Sharpless, oh, I don't remember when, some time ago, Ken Sharpless said, you know what, if we take this, uh, if we take something that is got a lot of shape to it, okay, that would be this, titanium tetra isopropoxide, and this, which is, oh, I don't ever remember the name of that. I call it DET. Uh, it's diethyl tartrate, I think. Diethyl tartrate, yeah, diethyl tartrate. Um, if we take these two, then we, we, what we have is we have chiral compounds now. We have a chiral compound. In this case, it's plus, rotates uh, plane polarized light in the positive direction. Uh, and that will recognize, because we have a chiral compound, it's really chiral, that's the point. Okay, since it's chiral, as it um, docks with this double bond, it will dock differently because it's got this recognizable uh, reference point right there. 
All right. So here's how we're going to solve this. If we take uh, if we take titanium tetraisopropoxide, which looks like that. Can you see an isopropoxide right there? There's four of them. Okay. If we take that and plus DET, then this is going to go on the top. Okay. So let's look at it. Now, let's put this double bond down in the plane of the board or the paper and if we do that then the um, this group here where's my pen this group here needs to be in the top right can you see that and if we do that and we add plus det plus titanium titanium tetra isopropoxide right and that's going to be plus four of course okay titanium tetraisopropoxide which please don't say that i don't even know why i'm saying it now it doesn't matter it could not matter less what that stuff is you do need to write it out you need to be able to write it out and recognize it the, the uh, saying it helps me and that's why i'm doing that all right and then the plus det that's going to form uh a an epoxide above the plane can you see that I lost my pen there it is it's going to form an epoxide above the plane. Okay? All right. So I sort of hinted at the answer to this. How does the catalyst favor just one epoxide product? I sort of talked about that in the last, uh, in the last slide. So go now and practice with conceptual checkpoint 14.16. Uh, let me do say, I do have another video on this, which gives more details, which I think I'll post uh, on D2L as an additional uh, element. Okay, but this is what the book describes, and I'm trying to stick close to the book, keep the video short uh, for, these, for these lecture videos. Good luck.